There's a place that will stay within me wherever I may choose to go. I will always recall the city, know every street and shore. Sail down the river which brings us life, winding through my Singapore. Hi everyone, welcome to today's uh, virtual outing. So, uh, this month's virtual outing is very special because uh, we are celebrating our Singapore's uh, birthday. So uh, later I will bring you all to a few different places uh, to learn about the history of Singapore and from there hope that uh, you can have a better understanding. Lah. So follow me uh, you know, to find out more. Yeah, but before we go, right, this place is very special and unique because this is where the Merlion was, uh, is lah, located. And you know, you can come here to actually uh, see the sculpture and see how this uh, magnificent lion, uh, or I should call it mer lion, uh, spit out water, <laughs> or significant, uh, signifying the growth of Singapore's economy, la, or in the sense. Alright, so without further ado, uh, let's go on to our today's adventure. Welcome to the Fox Siloso. So Fox Siloso is the sole restored coaster gun battery from the twelve, uh, from the twelve such batteries which made up uh, Fortress Singapore at the start of uh, World War Two. Uh, now the fort is situated uh, on Pulau Belakang Mati, now Sentosa, uh, an island south of mainland Singapore. So the fort right is now a military museum open to the public and the surrender chambers in Fox Silosora reopened in June 2017 uh, with a refreshed uh, exhibition and free admission. The word uh, Siloso of the Fox name is derived from a Malayan me uh, meaning called rock. Now there was a huge rock at the mouth of Singapore's harbour which imposed a hazard to passing ships. Now, with trade ever flourishing in Singapore since the opening of the Swiss Canal in 1869, uh, it became necessary uh, to protect Singapore's port. Now, based on the report by Major Edward Lake of the British Royal Engineers, uh, a, a fort was decided to build on uh, Pulau Belakang Mati, which is Sentosa here. Uh, in 1874 to protect Keppel Harbour. So as part of the planned fortifications, Mount Siloso's top was blown off to flatten it uh, for the installation of uh, coastal artillery uh, gun platforms. And then by the 1880s, several gun batteries were located on Mount Siloso and uh, Mount Serapone uh, which is facing north towards mainland Singapore on Sentosa's north, uh, northern coast, right? On um, Pulau Belakang Mati, right? It becomes a stronghold for British uh, naval defences in Singapore. By the 1880s, uh, Fort Siloso actually possessed right, uh, seven inch guns 
and two sixty four pounder guns. And in the eighteen nineties, right, five ten inch guns were also installed. So these guns were operated automatically and powdered from an underground uh, electric powerhouse. In the nineteen thirties, uh, the twin six pounder guns, uh, quick firing anti torpedo boat guns, five search, uh, five large search lights, and an operation tower for overall command and control. So there are also two machine guns nests and two twin Lewis uh, anti-aircraft -air machine guns uh, were added uh, due to the report, reports of an impending war rising from an ever military ambitious Imperial Japan. So the fort was uh, manned then by both the British Royal Artillery and the locally formed Singapore Artillery Corps. The forts right, were designed and built to defend Singapore against an invasion uh, by sea from the south. However, during the Battle of Singapore in February of 1942, right, the guns were instead turned 180 degrees inland to fire at rapidly uh, advancing Japanese force approaching Singapore from the north uh, via British Malaya. So the Fox gun were actually fired at enroaching Japanese uh, positions and troops who were pushing towards the city uh, area northwest from Tenga Airfield. The British and local troops, right, uh, who were retreating from the overrun Paya Lebar battery in Singapore's uh, northwest, right, and heading back to friendly British lines via the sea, uh, were mistaken for Japanese troops and fired on. So. Uh, that caused right at least major casualties sustained. Just now, right as we enter the building at the entrance of Fort Zilso, right, uh, is now known as the Surrender Chambers, and has a vivid portrayal of the scenes of the British and Japanese surrenders in World War II. Uh, there's also actual footage of the war being played interactively. So this is the, on the upper story, with the ground floor have been turned into a souvenir shop. Now, during the Japanese occupation of Singapore from 1942 to 1945, the fort was actually used as a small prisoner of war camp. After the Japanese surrender in uh, 1945, the Royal Navy actually occupied the fort in 1946 and its guns were actually manned by the 1st Malay Coast Battery and Royal Artillery. So Gurkha detachments from British India uh, took over manning the guns when the British gunners were withdrawn and the 1st Malay Coast uh, Battery was actually disbanded sometime later in 1946. Now, during the uh, confrontasi period between Sukarno's uh, Indonesia and the Malaysia, Malaysian Federation from 1963 to 1965, Fort Siloso was uh, manned by the 10th Gokha Rifles to prevent Indonesian military right, uh, trained saboteurs from landing on Sentosa and Kappa uh, harbors slightly inland. Fort Siloso actually became a Catholic retreat for locally based uh, British forces until Sentosa was handed over to the Singapore government following uh, the British military withdrawal starting in 1967. So the Singapore Armed Forces actually then took control of the fort. Uh, we also know that Fort Siloso was then converted into a military museum uh, in 1974. So it displayed the history and various naval guns. Now, other coastal guns, uh, both British and Japanese, uh, from different parts of Singapore, right, such as a pair of Japanese uh, naval cannons, right, were discovered and uh, brought over from Mandai and was put here for display. Now, it had previously held the display of the British surrender uh, of Singapore in February of 1942 until its relocation to the former Fort Motor Factory. 
So we, the former Ford Motor Factory right, is actually the actual site of the British surrender. And it was in Bukit Timah la, in the early 2000s. All right. So if you like to know about the history over here, how this place defended Singapore during the World War II, come over here to really find out more and really observe the history. The enemy hasn't come by sea as we thought, so they're climbing on the oil installations on Kuala Buka to make sure the enemy doesn't get them. It's no fire. Welcome to the War Memorial Park in Singapore. So this park right is a park in Singapore located at the junctions of Beach Road, uh, Sanford Road, uh, Nikko Highway and Bras Basa Road in the downtown core of Singapore's uh, central region next to Esplanade MRT station. So the Civilian War Memorial is located at the center of the park as a memorial to civilians who died in Singapore during World War II. Now, uh, it's managed by National Parks Board. During the Suqing Massacre uh, that occurred in Singapore during World War II, mass war graves right, were dug to contain the bodies of uh, civilians who were killed by the Japanese. So when the bodies were unearthed in 1962 in various places, uh, the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry decided to gather the remains and create a memorial for them. Uh, the then Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew uh, set aside a plot of land at Beach Road for the building of the memorial and the war memorial park was created. On uh, 15 June 1963, in a monumental ceremony attended by DIPs, inter-religious organizations, community leaders, and many others, uh, the then Prime Minister officiated at the launch of the Civilian War Memorial Project ceremony. So the project was completed and the monument was unveiled on 15 February 1967 uh, in conjunction uh, with the 25th anniversary of the fall of Singapore. The monument right uh, was in the Civilian War Memorial uh, but was affectionately known as the Chopsticks Memorial with reference to its design uh, with four pillars each with a height of about 67 meters the monument resembles two pairs of chopsticks. Now, the two design, the design of the four pillars, right, actually bears a significant meaning. They symbolize the four main races of people living in Singapore. Uh, words, words, words were inscribed on the base of the memorial in four languages: English, Mandarin, Malay, and Tamil. The words read. Memorial to the civilian victims of the Japanese occupation 1942 to 1945. There is a park la, over here. So the 1.4 hectare park has opened launch with uh, Gintern Gimong uh, Malingjo trees. Uh, covering the walkway leading up to the memorial from the four corners of the park. So a pond right is located around the memorial as you have seen earlier and the park with the civilian uh, war memorial right, is a popular sightseeing venue. So if you are uh, interested in really finding out about the uh, memories and uh, what has really happened uh, during the incident, I think it's good to actually come here to take a look and also to pay the respect for those who sacrificed their lives during the World War. Alright, so check out this place to really find out more.
are here at the former Indian National Army Monument. So this uh, former Indian National Army, Army Monument is a historical site and a demolished war memorial at the Esplanade Park located at the Connaught, Connaught Drive within the downtown of Singapore. The monument was constructed to commemorate the unknown warrior of the Indian National Army. The words inscribed on the war memorial were its motto, which is unity, faith and sacrifice. It was built during the Japanese occupation of Singapore as the Japanese and the INA had one enemy in common the British. So Subhras uh, Chandra Bose laid the foundation stone on 8 July 1945 and the words inscribed upon the war memorial were the motto of the INA. So the monument was then erected within a month by the Japanese on August 1945 and a few months before Singapore was recaptured by the British. So the construction of the monument was proposed by Bose, the co-founder of the INA and the head state of the provisional government of Free India. The INA was backed by the Japanese forces for its goal of gaining India's independence from Britain. So the future generations of Indians who will be born, not as slaves but as free men, because of the colossal uh, sacrifice uh, that bless the name and proudly proclaim to the world that their forebearers uh, fought and suffered reverses in the Battle of Manipur, Assam and Burma. But through temporary failure, uh, they paved the way to ultimate su success and glory. So this was uh, what Subhras Chandra Bosch uh, said while paying homage to the uh, martyrs of the INA while laying foundation stone of the former INA monument uh, at Singapore on 8 July 1945. Lord Louis Mountbatten, the head of Southeast Asia Command, uh, ordered the former Indian National Army monument to be demolished when Singapore was recaptured by the Allies in 1942. It has been suggested by some historians that Mountbatten's decision to demolish the INA's memorial was part of the larger effort to spread, to prevent the spread of the socialist ideas of the INA in the political atmosphere of the Cold War and the decolonization of Asia. So in 1995, the National Heritage Board placed the, marked the place as a historical site. A central, central turf has been since being erected at the site where the memorial once stood. And in 1995, right, the National Heritage Board placed, marked the place as a historical site and subsequently with financial donations from the India community in Singapore. Uh, it became a new monument commemorating the previous one, which was erected on the spot. This place uh, shows the sacrifices that the India has uh, done. Uh, has made during the World War II. Uh, so for those uh, Indian communities, uh, I think it's good you come here and really read through the history and understand uh, what your uh, forefathers have done. Right? And also for other races, you can come here to uh, get to know more and understand the history as well. Right? So come here to find out more. Welcome to the Battle Box. So the Battle Box is the popular name of the Fort Canning Bunker, formerly known as Headquarters uh, Malaya Command Operations Bunker. So it is constructed under the Fort Canning Hill, Singapore as an emergency bomb proof command center during the Malayan uh, campaign and the Battle of Singapore. And now right, the Battle Box right, is a museum and tourist attractions.
Given its position in the Western Pacific Ocean, Singapore had long been recognized as being strategically uh, important for the Royal Navy to counter the growing influences of the Japanese, who were regarded as being the logical threat to Britain's interests in the Far East and the Pacific. Now, to counter this, the Admiralty devised uh, the Singapore strategy, which required a well-equipped naval base and according to the Singapore Naval Base, uh, it was constructed on the north shore of Singapore's island. Uh, the base and its associated defences required a large British military presence on the island. Now, Fort Canning Hill uh, was used by the British Army as their headquarters in Singapore. If a number of buildings built for this purpose in the 1920s, uh, however, the lack of a headquarters combining all three services present in Singapore, the Army, Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, it was appreciated in 1936 by the then Colonel Arthur Percival, the Chief of Staff to General Dobby, General Officer Commanding Malaya. To remedy this, uh, combined uh, operations headquarters was proposed for Fort Canning. Fort Canning Hill is a small hill in the central area of Singapore Island. Uh, Stanford Raffles had built a residence there in 1823. But when the street settlement which included Singapore became a crown colony in eight, 1867, a fort was constructed on the hill. However, by the turn of the century, the construction of the other defences around Singapore rendered the Fort Canning fortification surplus surplus two requirements. Now, located nearly 30 feet beneath the hill, the Fort Canning Bunker, also known as the Headquarters Malaya Command Center, Command Operations Bunker, was constructed in 1936 and completed by 1941. Sources vary as to number of rooms in the bunker. One states 22 while another authorized, uh, altered by the journalist who rediscovered the Bacter box, claims 29 rooms. The bunker was constructed with one meter thick reinforced concrete walls to withstand direct hits from bombs and shells. The complex included a telephone exchange connected to all military and most civilian switchboards in Malaya, various signals and operation rooms. Uh, sleeping quarters and latrines. The bunker also included a cipher room for coding and decoding messengers. But, at, but by the time of the fall of Malaya, this work had been shifted elsewhere and the cipher room was used as sleeping quarters. The commander of fixed defences, Brigadier Curtis, Curtis, coordinated the coastal artillery strikes on naval targets from the bunker. By 1941, the bunker was considered to be too small uh, for its intended use. Percival having returned to Malaya as Lieutenant General and General Officer Commanding Malaya uh, authorized construction of a new combined operations headquarters at the Royal Air Force headquarters in Simiru. The construction of this new headquarters begins in 1941. 
and was finished in December of the year. Although combined operations headquarters have been relocated to Simi Road, the Fort Canning bunker remains the headquarters of a major general, uh, Frank Keith Simmons, who, as the fortress commander Singapore, was responsible, responsible for the defense of the Singapore island. The anti aircraft gun operations room and naval extended defenses also remain at the bunker. The Japanese invaded Malaya on 8 December 1941 by moving south through Siam, now known as Thailand, as well as making landings at Kota Baru on the northeast coast of Malaya. Rapidly retreating through Malaya, Allied forces were forced back to Singapore uh, by 31st December 1942. And on 8 February, Japanese troops then crossed the Straits of Johor at the Battle of Suribum Beach on the northwest coast of Singapore Island, followed by a second landing near the Kranji River at the Battle of Kranji. The Siming route location had been abandoned during the Battle of Kranji with Lieutenant General Percival shifting the combined operations headquarters to Fort Canning Bunker on 11 February 1942. By the later stages of the battle uh, for Singapore, the Japanese were bombing the central area of Singapore, including Fort Canning Hill at Weir. Fort Canning Hill was also within range of the Japanese artillery Forcing personnel into the bunker. There were around 500 officers and men in the bunker in the later stages of the battle. Now, the decision to surrender Singapore was made by Lieutenant General Percival in a meeting on the morning of 15 February 1942. Uh, held in the Commander Anti Aircraft Defense Room of the bunker. A number of senior officers were in attendance. So that includes General Bennett, Hef and Simmons. With diminishing water supplies and no viable options for launching a counter-attack, the decision was made to seek terms with the Japanese. Now, the Fort Canning bunker was later occupied by Japanese forces during the Japanese occupation of Singapore and used for communications right up to the time of the Japanese surrender. At the conclusion of the Second World War, the bunker complex itself appeared to have been looted in the aftermath of the Japanese surrender. Um, upon re-entry to the complex in 1988, evidence of a number of excavations were observed, presumably attempts to find loots that may have been concealed by the Japanese. again used uh, by the British as the Singapore based district headquarters. Now the British handed over Fort Canning to the Singapore Armed Forces in 1968 to 69 and the buildings of the Fort Canning Hill served for a time as the Singapore Command and Staff College. The Fort, Col uh, Fort Canning Bunker Having remained empty and unused since the war, uh, was sealed off in the late 1960s due to safety concerns and its exact location forgotten. So it was brought back to the public eye when it was rediscovered by a journalist in 1988 who was following a number of leads claiming the existence of an underground bunker complex on Fort Canning Hill. 
The Fort Canning bunker was developed into a museum depicting the final days of the Battle of Singapore. And the museum is called the Battle Box. It was formally opened on 15 February 1997 on the 55th anniversary of the surrender of Singapore. The Battle Box is a place full of history and for you to really understand uh, the battle between uh, the Singapore Defence Force uh, or then the British Defence Force and the Japanese. So coming to this place, you will get to know and see the details very cle uh, clearly and understand the little, little history or notes that you probably won't uh, see in the textbook. Alright, so really come here and visit this place to really understand the details of this uh, important history that has played uh, in all our lives. Percival wanted to discuss guarantees over the security of civilians and eventually requested for a ceasefire and for negotiations to continue the next morning. So we have come to the end of uh, today's uh, virtual outing. Uh, and as we celebrate Singapore's birthday, right, I think uh, it's good that we understand about the history and how uh, this country is being formed. So I uh, hope this virtual tour has brought you to a new understanding of the sacrifices that uh, our forefathers have made during the World War and how they have helped the country to progress until today. All right. So with that, we have come to the end of today's video and if you like this video, please uh, remember to uh, like, share and subscribe and also uh, like the uh, on the notification bell and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!